Hi, my name is Bill Norton, and I will be presenting this Peering 101, an introduction to Internet Peering. The Internet, of course, is a network of networks, and Internet Peering is one method ISPs use to interconnect their networks together on the Internet. We have assembled a wealth of information at the Dr. Peering website, all freely available at peering.drpeering.net, and we will share some of that information here today. I promise to you, in the next 15 minutes, you'll have a sense of how the Internet is interconnected and have a working knowledge of the terms Internet peering, Internet transit, and how this whole thing can be viewed within the paradigm of a global ecosystem, a set of Internet peering ecosystems. We will do this in two sections. We will first introduce the definitions and roles of Internet transit and peering. Then we will apply these definitions to give them a test drive and have a quiz slash discussion to make sure that we all have a working knowledge of these terms. We will finish up with a conceptual bit about the theoretical framework behind some of the operations infrastructure that supports peering and Internet exchange points specifically. We will discuss why it makes sense to Internet service providers, to the Internet exchange point itself, and present a theoretical model for valuing an Internet exchange point. So who am I? Uh, well, my name is Bill Norton. I had the title of co-founder and chief technical liaison for Equinix, a carrier-neutral internet exchange point. My primary responsibility was facilitating the interactions between the internet service providers, carriers, and content providers that co-located within the buildings. Prior to Equinix, I worked for Merit Network during the operations of the National Science Foundation Network, the NSFNet which was the precursor to the modern commercial internet. During these 11 years at Merit, I developed software, I led the construction of a network operations center, and chaired the North American Network Operators Group, the operations forum for the North American internet. But I am probably most well known for authoring a series of 12 white papers documenting internet operations activities surrounding internet peering and the business associated with that. So why did I write these white papers? Well, in 1998, I noticed that there were many books on protocols, hardware, algorithms, but there was no documentation on peering. So I spent all of my time working with the Internet Operations community, asking questions like, what is peering? Why peer? Why not peer? When do exchange points make sense? And I documented the answers in the form of white papers. I would then walk other people through the, the answers I got and refine the papers, and after about a hundred walkthroughs of these papers and refinements, I had in my hand the white paper that represented the community mindset on a particular operations topic. I made these white papers freely available, and these white papers have become, become reflections of the community mindset of a particular operations topic. So now let's get into the lexicon of peering. At the most basic level, understand that the Internet is a network of networks. An Internet service provider, by definition, sells access to the global Internet. So an Internet service provider must get itself connected to an entity that is already attached to the global Internet. There are two dominant methods for Internet interconnection. Transit is defined as a service whereby one ISP sells access to the global Internet. Think of it as a port in the wall that says Internet this way. To illustrate, let's assume that you are an ISP. Uh, let's call you Blue ISP, shown there on the left-hand side. You must purchase transit from an upstream ISP who is already connected to the global Internet. Your, quote, upstream ISP will handle everything for you. The upstream ISP makes sure that your packets get to the right place on the global Internet and makes sure that the rest of the Internet knows how to get to you and your customers. Transit is typically a metered service. Every five minutes, a measure is taken, and at the end of the month, the samples are stacked lowest to highest. The 95th percentile measure is the volume upon which your transit service is billed. To give you a sense of what the prices are on the Internet, uh, when I first started working at Equinix, the price was about $1,200 per megabit per second. Um, in 2004, the price dropped down to $120 per megabit per second. In 2008, the measure was about $12 per megabit per second. And here in 2010, we're seeing roughly $5 or less per megabit per second on average. 
Um, let's talk about the 95th percentile here for just a minute. Um, if you measure the month's worth of five minute samples from lowest to highest, as shown here in the yellow diagram, uh, you can see that at the very top there are 36 hours per month for an ISP to burst for free that are above the 95th percentile measure that uh, they're being measured upon. This leads to a, an interesting um, question that the ISPs, some of them, can, uh, can ponder. How can we game this particular system? And uh, what some of them have experimented in doing is to take advantage of those top 36 hours that are essentially free. What they'll do is burst their traffic for up to 35 hours per month and send as much traffic as they can to their upstream provider who will handle that traffic. And then for the remaining 95 or 96th percentile numbers, they'll send 0 megabits per second. And that way they can spread their traffic across uh, 26 or so ISPs that are their upstream providers and ultimately have a transit bill that is close to zero. Of course, this isn't sustainable and people uh, get on rather quickly to what's going on here and have put in place a minimum commitment type of service. This is where the price that you pay on a megabit per second basis is based upon the amount of traffic that you commit to. So if you don't commit to any amount of traffic, then the price might be very high on a megabit per second basis. If you commit to more traffic, the, the per unit price ends up being uh, quite a bit less. So um, this is some of the knobs that ISPs have when they uh, work on their transit service include which upstream ISP to select, um, how much of a commitment they want to make to a particular ISP, and how much they're willing to pay on a megabit per second basis for that particular level of commitment. So um, what's nice about transit is it's easy, it's cheap, and the question that often comes up in the peering communities, um, so why do you need anything else? Um, after all, if transit is uh, $4 per megabit per second and you're sending 100 gigabits per second of traffic to your upstream provider, um, that, that's $400,000 per month. And that ends up being part of the answer. That's a lot of money to spend per month. So enter peering. Peering is defined as a reciprocal exchange of access to each other's customers. Think of peering as a local optimization. In this diagram, the blue ISP on the left sends all of its traffic to its upstream provider, and the red ISP sends all of its traffic to its upstream ISP. Both ISPs realize that they are sending a healthy chunk of traffic to each other through their upstream internet service provider. They realize that they could directly interconnect the networks and send traffic destined to or from each other directly to each other, bypassing the upstream ISP and its meter. It may save money to peer with each other, depending on the cost of peering and the volume of traffic they can peer with each other for free. This is peering math that you and other peering coordinators master. So why peer? Saving this money uh, is a key reason that's cited often, but there are performance benefits to peering as well. The shortest path between two points is a straight line, and that logic applies here as well. Some argue that the performance of a better, faster, interconnected internet will make more money for those that charge based upon traffic volume. Therefore, peering and managed interconnects um, work very well and will actually make you more money. These are some of the topics that are heatedly debated within the peering community. There are two key points to make about peering. First is that peering is not transitive. That is, if the blue ISP peers with the red ISP and the red ISP peers with the green ISP, that does not imply that the blue ISP can reach the green ISP through its peering relationship with the red ISP. Remember that peering is a reciprocal exchange of access to each other's customers. And this does not necessarily include the other peers' customers. In this way, peering is therefore not a perfect substitute for transit, which gives you access to the global internet.